Hi, this is Harish here. Welcome to DB2 LUW Tips and Tricks video tutorial part 57. In this video tutorial, I'm going to talk about how to catch a specific error code using DB2 PD CFG utility. This slide talks about the problem and the solution. So the problem scenario is uh, very straightforward. We want to uh, catch a specific error code using the DB2 PD CFG utility. Now, um, for every any activity that you do uh, in a database, so under a connection, so some uh, error might occur. So either uh, the, the operation is going to execute in a smooth manner or it's going to error out. So if some error occurs, so for that particular connection, there is a SQL CA or SQL communication area uh, in which uh, there will be a, a indicators like SQL code, SQL state, ZRC code like that. So this SQL code and SQL state, if it is a zero value, then uh, it is a smooth operation, so no error. If it is a non-zero value, then there are some er that there will be some errors or warnings also. There are some SQL codes for warnings also. So uh, this will be returned uh, using the SQL CA communication area. So whatever uh, uh, activity that is done, if some error uh, is occurring. So these error codes are sent to the client connections and also they are uh, logged in the db2 diag.log. Uh, the functionality that we are talking about here is something similar to throw and catch exception. So when you submit some activity to the database, if some error occurs, so you can catch that as an exception in the uh, application program and handle that in, in the uh, application side. So what we are discussing here is we want to catch the exception in the server side. So something like say some error occurs, but at that point of time, I want to have some more additional information as to why that error occurred. So if you look in the db2 diag.log, you will know the application handle at what time the error occurred, what is that SQL code and everything, uh, or the ZRC code. So those things will be there, but it won't tell you what kind of activities that were running at that point in time. So for that, you need to employ monitoring, right? So monitoring is like, it will not monitor specific error codes, it will only monitor all the SQL statements. So you have to, uh, you know, uh, configure some statement monitor and map the entries in the dialogue with uh, the same timestamp with the statements and figure out, you know, what statements were executing at that point in time like that. So which is really a somewhat cumbersome uh, or difficult task to do. So there is a simplified way. So this is like throwing some exception and catching some exception. So it should be as simple as that. So for that, the solution is to use db2 pd cfg utility with catch option wherein the catch option will uh, you know we can configure the catch option to catch based on some sql code or the zrc code uh, or even the diag diag message the, the message string so so many things are there so uh, uh, for detailed information uh, you can uh, refer the uh, db2 knowledge center uh, then there is db2 cost.sh callout script okay so this callout script can be modified to collect the required data when some particular error condition occurs. So once you configure the db2 pd cfg utility and for that particular SQL code, when the error occurs, it will execute the db2 cost.sh callout script. So where is this cost.sh or cost.batch file available? It is in dollar home SQL lib bin directory. That's a master copy, so don't need to change that. We can copy this to that file to home SQL lib adm folder there we can modify. So we can have our own custom code inside that, that will be uh, executed once the error condition occurs. So let us uh, get into an example, uh, like a demo, so that it will be easier for us to understand. So here I am starting the instance, I am connecting to the sample database, I am creating a table, and I am inserting a few values into them. So as you can see, uh, there are some duplicate values here, okay. So let me first run this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some error condition. So the error condition is something like uh, there is a table with some data and I'm going to create a unique index. So the unique index obviously will fail because there are duplicate value in the data. Okay. So I'm going to configure the uh, error condition, like how to catch the error condition. That's what I'm going to demo. So first I have, um, yeah, so I have run everything. So it is all, the table is created, all the data is inserted. Okay. And uh, what I'll do is I'll first go and clear the dialog file. So let me just go to the SQL lib uh, db2 dump. So this is the dialog file. So I'll open with leaf pad. I just blank it out so that I'll show you the exact error condition. Okay. 
so now I'm going to create the index okay so this should uh, give me an error okay yeah so uh, duplicate uh, entries uh, you know the data is having duplicate entries so there is a SQL code for this so I'll show you now what is the corresponding dialog uh, message okay so in the dialog you can see that see it is uh, for that particular uh, index creation, uh, unique index creation, there is an error logged in the dialog. So what is the application handle? And um, uh, you know, what is the ZRC code and everything is, is here, okay? So this is what we are going to configure now, okay? So let me just do that, okay? So let me clear this log file again, okay? And then we need to, uh, the next step is we need to modify the cost.h, right? So here you can see sqlib uh, adm db2 cost. So actually it is in bin directory. So I will show you that also. In bin directory, you will find db2 cost, db2 cost.batch. Okay, this is the file. So I have copied this over to the adm uh, folder as well. Okay. So there we can go and modify it. Okay, so open with leaf pad. So it's already a pre-written code. Okay, so uh, we just need to plug in our code wherever we want. So the thing is well, SQL code. So this is the uh, uh, thing that we want to uh, uh, capture like based on the SQL code, okay? Uh, or the ZRC code, okay? Both are, uh, both you can use. So I'm using going to use the ZRC code here. So what I'm doing is, so this is my custom code. So I'm taking the application handle and uh, I'm going to execute this statement, db2pd hyphen db, db name hyphen app info and I'm going to pass the application handle. So instead of uh, collect, so I can write various things like I can collect uh, memory information, I can collect uh, uh, dynamic statements that we're executing at that point of time, like a lot of things. But uh, in this uh, scenario, I'm going to just uh, pass the application handle and get the information about that particular application what it was doing at that point in time right what kind of uh, query it was executing like that i can find it out okay before i do that i need to configure the application handle right so i have to pass uh, like what is my application handle um, okay so i'll say db2 list applications so it is eight right so since it is eight, so I, I need to say here, uh, so I need to change this, okay? Otherwise it, it won't work. Uh, it should say nine hyphen nine like that, okay? So hopefully it should work. Let's see. Okay, so once I have modified, now I just need to configure this. So this is one simple. First we can see if you want to know what is the status, right? So whether it is already configured or not, I can just get it. Yeah. So the status is like, it says like that, but uh, actually it is not configured, right? So that's the message, okay? So if I want to configure, I can configure like this, okay? So this is the, this is the ZRC code that I'm giving, okay? Which I got from the dialog. Okay. See now it is configured. So I can configure ZRC. I can configure dialog text. I can con I can configure ADM code. I can give SQL code. So whatever I want to catch here, so I, I can catch SQL code. I can catch re SQL code with reason code, ADM code, diag text, ZRC code like that. Okay. So now it is it is done. You can see the the callout script also which one it is getting called. Okay. And uh, that's it. So we need to just reproduce the error condition now. Okay. So once this uh, error condition is occurring, so you can see that now in the SQL lib db2 dump, see now the text file is created, okay? So these are the two uh, error files that gets created. See here, the SQL application handle is eight, okay? So this is the uh, instance, this is the database, this is the timestamp, this is the application which caused, you know, which raised that particular error condition, okay? And uh, this file will contain uh, 
this is your uh, your uh, code right like uh, db2 pd hyphen db app info application handle so which is what has been executed here right so you can see that the application handle and uh, it is in uow executing state so which means that when it is executing the error has occurred and at the same time the information has been captured you can see the sql statement also create unique index my index on tui so this will occur immediately on that execution and the information will be captured for you uh, so it is pretty straightforward now we will be able to easily understand right so when some error condition occurs in the dialog uh, then uh, we can easily configure this db2pd cfg and the next time when it occurs we will have the information what that particular application was and what it was executing when that error condition occurred so very simple straightforward uh, thing instead of a statement monitor right statement monitor also can do the same uh, functionality but you will have to mix and match timestamps and uh, you know various things so it will be a much simpler method but however uh, just care needs to be taken because if that particular error condition occurs very frequently every minute if it occurs right then every every minute if it occurs then every this thing every minute this db2 cost dot batch will be executed so th those many executions will be there right so you just need to take care of that so if it is a less frequent error and you want to understand uh, what is causing the issue like what is the root cause what statement was executed what is the application id then this will be a very uh, alternative approach okay uh, hope this information was useful to you uh, thanks for uh, subscribing uh, to my channel and if you are watching video for the first time please subscribe to my uh, youtube channel db2lew academy see you in the next video tutorial thanks bye bye